doing good on time. Oh yeah, we're still doing good on time. Oh yeah. All right, let's talk about Mountain Mint. All right, so first thing I want to say, first and foremost, Mountain Mint seeds are dinky. Super dinky. Like, can you even see that? Camera focus on that. Come on. No? Okay. Like, I don't even know at this point. Oh, yeah. Let's talk about Mountain Mint. Oh, this one's kind of weird, but I'm kind of excited about it. So, so Mountain Mint's common names are Mountain Mint, Virginia, Wild Basil, which I did not know until today. I was today years old. Prairie Hyssop. I don't know what Prairie Hyssop is, so if you guys could let me know in the comments below what a Prairie Hyssop is, that would be awesome. So the great thing about Mountain Mint for everyone who hates mint because it takes over and does its own thing and it's invasive and blah, blah, blah. Mountain mint is actually a native flower to the US. So, bam, Gina. It is in fact a perennial. It will come back year after year. And it grow, doesn't grow from seeds though. It grows from the rhizomes in the soil. And it is a very tiny seed. So we're gonna do our best here. USDA people with the zones, just so y'all know, it grows in the zones three through seven. So, one that requires no stratification. I'm hoping I can just like sprinkle some of these in there because they're so tiny. I think that was some seeds in there. Somebody has like a great idea on how to deal with like these super tiny seeds. I'm gonna like get really close to you guys. Hopefully you can see it. Uh, my light's a little bright for it, but anyway. So the only sun requirements for Mountain Mint is it likes full sun or partial sun. So it's like a pretty perfect plant for garden beds. It grows to be about 36 inches tall, which is still kind of tall, but not like me tall. You know, it's not six foot. So it's only like a three foot plant, so it's about half my size. Flowers will be white, which is pretty cool. I think that's going to offset some of my colors over there. So these will bloom in early summer, late summer, early fall. Medicinal, it attracts pollinators, butterflies, honeybees, and they use it as an aromatherapy. The weird part that I was talking about, and I know there's other plants that do it, but you know, I haven't dealt with them a lot. So, you know, this is like my first real take on like trying to do these herbals without like doing those cuttings or so on and so forth. And uh, so these ones, you actually don't want to cover with soil. It needs sun to germinate. So we're just going to let them, we're just going to do what I just did. I'm going to leave it like it is. I'm going to give it a misting. And then, you know, when I put the dome and everything on there, which I this did not come with a dome. So I'm going to make my own. It's going to be a little janky, but it'll get the job done. Sorry, that was bothering. So yeah, the real trick to it is to keep them moist and not to cover these guys, which is, like I said, is kind of cool. So I'm just going to lay down some more water here. Get them a little damp, a little seep in. And yeah, we're going to give them about 30 days to germinate and get ready to rock. All right, well, if you guys want to see the updates on where we grow these and how we plant them and transplant and everything else, go ahead and hit that subscribe button, and we'll see you there.